What happened at Silicon Valley Bank and should we bail them out? Well, in short, here's what happened. Everybody went to get their money out and they ran out of money. So then the FDIC took over uh, and that's what happened. Uh, should we bail them out? Well, of course. Don't we just bail everyone out? Uh, I think we, only if they're really rich folks. Anyway, before I get into that, uh, this is going to be a slightly longer video. Uh, we're going to dig into this with a little bit more detail. Um, I was kind of curious to know what was really going on and the ins and outs of it. So I thought I'd wade through some details. And if you're willing to wade through it with me, keep watching. Buckle up. Before we get started and plow through this material, I did just see an article from Axios that said that uh, Silicon Valley Bank did pay out annual bonuses to employees right before the bank was seized, just hours before the bank was seized. So hopefully those bonuses were paid out to super rich multimillionaire investment bankers with huge corner offices. I mean, that's what I'm hoping. Now, people are already talking about a bailout. I've already heard that thrown around a lot. And I think probably we should be thinking about bailouts right away because how else are the executives going to pay themselves huge bonuses? Uh, I, I just think we need to make sure that happens. Because um, as you know, that did happen before. Just a few articles that I pulled up from the old bank bailout. Remember that? Remember those good old days? So this one from ABC. Bailout banks gave millions in exec bonuses. Uh, this is from CBS. Uh, going, you know, this is going back to, what is it, 2008, I think. Uh, CBS, $1.6 billion of bank bailouts went to execs. That's nice. And uh, this one, I think, New York Times report show bonuses paid by bailed out banks. Bonuses paid by bailed out banks. So, uh, yeah, and that was dated 2009. Silicon Valley Bank collapsed on Friday. It was the seg second biggest bank failure in U.S. history. Uh, the FDIC took control. Now, insured depositors will have access to their funds by Monday morning, the FDIC said. This bank is the 16th largest in the U.S. with some $209 billion in assets. It is by far the biggest bank to fail since the near collapse of the financial system in 2008. Second only to the crisis or collapse of Washington Mutual. Now, here's a great explanation from the Wall Street Journal on what happened. So Silicon Valley Bank, uh, a lot of its clients are startups and VC firms. Um, despite the pandemic, they generated a ton of cash, which led a surge of deposits, and they ended the first quarter of 2020 with just over $60 billion in total, total deposits. And that skyrocketed to just shy of $200 billion by the end of the first quarter of 2022. So what happened then was SVB bought a ton of uh, longer-term U.S. Treasuries and government-backed mortgage securities. Um, SVB securities portfolio rose from about 27 billion in the first quarter of 2020 to around 128 billion by the end of 2021. Now, why was that a problem? The securities aren't that risky, but they do pay a fixed interest rate for many years. That isn't normally a problem unless the bank suddenly needs to sell the securities because the market interest rates have moved so much higher. These securities are suddenly worth less on the open, mar open market than they are valued at on the bank's books. So as a result, they could only be sold at a loss. And then one of the other problems that instead of getting a lot of deposits from its customers was actually getting a lot of outflow. They were needing the cash. And so that was causing a serious cash crunch on their end. So how did this all come to a head? Well, on Wednesday, SVB said it had sold a large chunk of its securities worth $21 billion at the time of the sale at a loss of about $1.8 billion after tax. So the bank's aim was to help it reset its interest earnings at today's higher yields and provide it with the balance sheet flexibility to meet potential outflows and still fund new lending. It also set out to raise about $2.25 in capital. So what happened after that bank announcement? Well, their stock price uh, took a nosedive and then they had basically VC firms reportedly telling their portfolio companies to get their money out of Silicon Valley Bank which is what caused the run on the bank. Everybody's like, I need to get my money out now. They'd actually hired Goldman Sachs earlier in the week to execute a private stock sale. And whenever Goldman Sachs is involved, you know that there aren't truckloads of money being made by people. This says that the chief executive, Greg Becker, tried to reassure customers on a call Thursday, telling them that the bank was on a solid financial footing despite the losses. Mm. 
that didn't last long. <laughs> so that didn't work and it went south really fast. I hope he had a hedge in that. I hope he would have been, he should have been saying, I'm hoping it's going to be okay. On Thursday, customers tried to withdraw $42 billion of the deposits, about a quarter of the bank's total. And that was according to a uh, uh, filing by California regulators. And that is when it ran out of cash. So what's going to happen? Well, the FDIC insures accounts up to $250,000. So those people should be getting their money according to what I'm reading. But if you're over that amount, that's an uninsured amount. And that's what's up in the air with people might lose that money. If a bailout's super important, it seems like it's mainly for the people who have over $250,000 in their account with Silicon Valley Bank, right? And it sounds like from what I've read that that's a lot of them. So it sounds like a lot of corporations and really rich people have money, like angel investors, people with lots of cash and companies have their money in Silicon Valley Bank. So not a lot of mom and pop shops and normal folks with their money in Silicon Valley Bank from what I'm reading. I hope you've enjoyed the little deep dive into Silicon Valley Bank. And I just hope that all the really rich executives uh, that were involved get bailed out so they can keep their big penthouses and their fancy cars and jets and all that stuff. We wouldn't want them to suffer. So let's just make sure they're taken care of.